Hey everyone, it's midnight and you know what time that is, quilting time. And tonight I'm making a quilt to give away at our family reunion. It's a tradition that we've been doing for decades. And I'm working on a quilt pattern that uses the same block over and over again. And we're gonna learn how to make a square and a square block. It's kind of like square squared. Let's get to it. This pattern designed by Crystal Jackowitz, and it uses a fat quarter bundle and a background fabric to make this beautiful quilt. But I only need 20 fat quarters, so that means I need to open this up and select the ones that aren't gonna make the cut. Oh, I do like the yellows. I'm just gonna lay them out and keep my options open. I can't commit to it right off the bat. I have to see what's out there first. I like how they're groups and colored, so I have my reds and my oranges and my yellows, purples. I'm usually not a big fan of purple, but I feel like I don't make enough purple quilts, so maybe maybe you're, you're kind of on the maybe list. Oh, I have a lot of oranges. I think I'm gonna have to cut you. It's not you, it's me. It's me. I think we're just better off as friends. I'll always love you. Maybe if we were in a different place in our life, it would work out. Well, I have my 20 fat quarters picked out. I have my background fabric that's white. It's gonna really make these colors pop. It's time to start pressing and start cutting. As much as I love having pre-cut fat quarter bundles, that means I have to do a little bit more ironing because they have those creases in there. But it's worth the extra work because that means I don't have to cut out so much. So every year, our family, my husband's family, has a reunion and they give away quilts as a part of the reunion. And it's something that they've been doing for a long time. It actually started with his grandpa, who's the one that taught me how to quilt. And grandpa decided that giving away quilts would be a great way to get people to attend the reunions. So we have about three or four quilts that we give away and there's very specific rules that have to be followed. But the basic idea is somebody makes them, I quilt them, and then somebody gets to win them. So it's fun getting to pick a quilt, make it exactly how I would want to make it, but then knowing that one of my family members is going to ultimately get to take it home and love on it. Oh, that smells good. Sorry, I get distracted easily. It was at the family reunions that I really saw quilts for the first time and grandpa had been doing that for years. And so when I saw him and I thought that would be really fun, I asked him to show me how to make one and that's where I ultimately made that decision to become a quilter. And it was really, really what changed my life if you think about it because now I'm here talking to you all because of that family reunion. So crazy when I think about that. So we have a quilt for each generation. Every generation has a quilt. You have to show up to the reunion to win it. So if you don't show up to the reunion for any reason, you can't win the quilts. And then we also have a hodgepodge quilt, which is what I'm making here. The hodgepodge quilt is a quilt that anybody could win any year. Because once you win your reunion quilt, you can't win anymore. But you can come anytime and win the hodgepodge. So that's grandpa's way of getting people to come back even after they've won their generation quilt. For this quilt pattern, all the fat quarters are cut exactly the same. And that's nice because at this time of the night, I don't want to have to think too much. And what I'm gonna do is actually stack up several fat quarters at a time. Hopefully I can hold it still and get some straight cuts out of that. I'll do three. I probably shouldn't be too adventurous. I promise I can read the lines on the ruler. It just takes me a little bit the later it gets. And then I'm gonna turn these strips and cut them into squares. So these are gonna be set aside for my scrappy binding, which I think is hilarious because now that means I have to actually bind it. And the rest of these squares, I'm gonna take just a second and separate them. Even though I've cut them out together, they're gonna to be in the same blocks, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment and group them. It's kind of like going to a family reunion where you sit with your own immediate family. It's kind of funny how that works out. All right, so take just a quick moment, separate these out, and then I'm gonna cut the background, and then we'll see how that square and a square block comes together. I'm just gonna make some more strips of the background and subcut those. And I've got a bunch of them to cut out. The fun thing about the reunions is it's really why I think Grandpa talked me into getting a long arm. When I came into the family, Grandpa hand quilted all those quilts himself, which is crazy to think about how much time that would have took. And I mean, there's a lot of thought that goes into all those because the generation quilts, the names are embroidered on the quilt. So every person in that generation, their name is on their generation quilt, which is a lot of fun because my kids love looking for their names on their quilts. But just because you come to the reunion doesn't mean you're guaranteed to win one. My brother-in-law went to 38 reunions before he won his generation quilt. My kids have all already won theirs and my oldest is 14. So it just depends the luck of the draw, really. All right, now I'm gonna subcut these. It's crazy to think that I was 20 before I saw my first quilt. 
When did you see your first quilt? Was it at a family reunion? Leave a comment in the comments below letting me know when you first realized that quilts were really cool. So I'm gonna use a two at a time half square triangle method that the designer has in the pattern. It's very easy. You can see I've already marked one of my squares. I'm just gonna put these together, right sides together. Now I know on solids there's not a right side, but if you were using prints, you would need to know that. And I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on each side of that line. And I'll just keep doing these little chain piecing. I know some people like it because it saves thread. I like it because it's faster. So I've got one half of the sewing done. I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on the other side of that line and then trim. Now it's time to snip. Snip, 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 snip. Get them all apart and then trim right on that line. So I have my adorable half square triangle block. And pressing is something I don't really take into a lot of consideration normally. I'm just kind of a random presser, especially when it comes to which side to press. But when I'm using a white fabric, I really want to be careful to press to the darker side. That's right, we press to the dark side out here. Because if I press to the white, you're gonna see those little strips of color show up. And it won't be noticeable until you start quilting. And that's when those little colors kind of pop through the white. So I want to try to be as careful as I can, making sure I press to the colored side, and then making sure there's no strings or threads that are working their way over there. That way, it just makes for a cleaner result when I'm done. They're starting to look like cheese triangles. I wish I had some cheese with my wine. Half square triangles are done. Now I'm gonna make those square and a square blocks and it's actually pretty easy. I'll show you how. All I need for the square and a square blocks is one white square and then two of these smaller yellow squares. And before I can sew, I'm gonna do a little cutting, a little trimming, and I'm gonna cut them in half diagonally to make not two, but four triangles. That's right, this is magic right here. And that's what it's gonna look like. And all I have to do is sew it together. I'm gonna sew the top and bottom on first. So there's gonna be a little overhang where those triangle points are extending past the square, and that's okay, that's how it's supposed to be. And I'm just gonna sew it together with that quarter inch seam. Perfect. The next cheese slice, I mean triangle, goes on the bottom. They do like, like cheese slices though. All right, top and bottom are done, but before I can sew on the other sides, I need to make sure I press that or it's not gonna end up well. If only I had a pressing mat. Oh wait, I got one right here. I love handy tools, it makes it so much easier. So I need to trim this to five and a half inch square and I have my ruler, but to make it nice and quick and easy, especially since I have 20 of these that I need to trim up, I'm gonna use a little tip I got from my friend Carla Alexander where she uses post-it notes to mark out her area. So I'm gonna use these fun post-it notes that I have laying around. I like the WTF, that's my favorite one. It means what's this for, of course. And I'm just gonna use that to mark out my five and a half inch line so that I know where that is. I don't have to spend so much time looking for it. Carla has a great class on Craftsy on stacking and cutting. There's more information about that in the description box below, but that's where I picked up this handy tip. So I can just line up my five and a half inch line and then trim off anything right there. Now I'm gonna take that, the half square triangles, and put them all together to make the big block that makes up this beautiful quilt. So the first block is the corner block here, and these little guys may look familiar. That's those half square triangles that I did earlier. I just took two of those, a colored square and a white square, and that made that quick little piece right there. And so one of those goes in each of the corners. And then our square square block, you know, our square and a square, that's gonna go in between them. So it's basically like a big nine patch block, if you think of it that way. What's fun about this, is since each block is made from the same fat quarter, you have the same color blocks. But if I wanted to, I can make it a little scrappier. I have some of the other blocks I've made with other fat quarters, and these pieces are interchangeable. So if I wanted to make it crazy or go wild, I could switch them out with other colors, or let's say I just accidentally <laughs> get them out of place, I could call it a scrappy quilt and not have to worry about it. So I think that's what's really fun about patterns, being able to change it up and make it fit your preferences. But if I'm being honest with you, I'm not really feeling scrappy tonight, so I'm gonna make it all the same color and then sew it together. It's not like I have OCD or anything, I just want everything in its place. I'm gonna sew them together in rows and then sew the rows together. So even though this block is nice and quick, there's one little thing I have to watch out and it's for these points right here. I have two points that are coming together and so what I'm gonna do is just take a moment where that white and that yellow point are and just kind of nestle them into each other and hold them in place. I don't usually sew with pins a whole lot, just 
because I'm usually in a rush <laughs> or slacking. But I will use a pin to hold this one in place so that that point doesn't shift. And that way, even if my piecing isn't perfect, those points will match and that'll make it look like it's perfect. Well, it's not perfectly matching, but that's close enough for government work right there. There we go, and that is one beautiful block. Now that you know how it goes together, I'm gonna put the rest of the blocks together doing a chain piecing method. I can't wait to show you what they look like. All right, gonna start sewing. So I have my blocks ready to go, but the problem is I don't have a design wall at my house. So instead of laying all the blocks out, I'm actually using these scraps of fabric that are representing the color of the block. It just helps me get an idea of how they're gonna go. And because on this quilt, you can make the layout whatever you want. And so I've been kind of playing out with some different arrangements going, you know, maybe lighter to darker, switching out a few of the colors or warmer to cooler, however I wanted to work that out. And so I think it's kind of a fun way to Visualize what it's gonna look like before you actually take the time to sew it together. Because once this quilt is sewn together, that's how it's staying, it's not gonna change. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe put all the yellows on top. So I think that will look nice. Oh, I think it'd be cool if I went light to dark. I kinda like that idea. This is where I get to feel like an artiste, like I know what I'm doing. I get to move these color swatches around and say things like value and contrast and sound like that I'm very knowledgeable on such subjects, which I am, of course. And then maybe this could be the orange area. Uh, maybe we'll switch these two, just ever so slightly. Okay, I think that looks good. Maybe this. Okay, that's perfect. No, no, I'm gonna go back. Okay, now I have my final plan. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out my first row and get this thing put together. It's all put together, the colors are placed just like I want them to look like, and now I'm gonna start quilting. I'm gonna start by quilting a wavy line that works its way across the blocks. And I'm gonna keep going until I run into the edge of the quilt. Now once I get there, I'm gonna travel just along the edge, about a quarter or half of an inch, and I'm gonna echo the line I've just quilted, except at a random point, I'm gonna run into the line before. So once that touch happens, or once I run into that line, I'm gonna back up and go the next direction until I run into it again, and change direction again. It's these touches or this changing in direction that allows me to quickly quilt this whole area by going back and forth, running into that line, changing direction and continuing on. I love the texture it adds to the quilt. And even though it can be quilted horizontally, I like to work with it vertically so that it's easier to push and pull the big quilt through the machine. So while working on this quilt, I wanna highlight random blocks. I don't wanna quilt every block specially, just a couple here and there. And that allows me to put the emphasis on the properly pieced blocks while letting the rest of it all just kind of fade away. So what I've done is quilted the wavy line design between this block and the edge of the quilt. So I wanna quilt some straight-ish lines with my free motion quilting foot. So I went ahead and put on a ruler foot. It's just like a free motion quilting foot, but it's a little bit taller. And what that does is prevents the ruler from slipping over that foot and going above the foot, underneath the needle. It's not a good thing when that happens. That breaks the needle, breaks the ruler, and you pee your pants. I mean, I don't know from experience or anything like that. But what I'm gonna do is use my ruler. It's a good quarter inch thick, so that's gonna keep it from going under the foot. And I have a little bit of sticky stuff on the back, a little grippy stuff that's gonna help keep it in place so I can quilt those lines. Now let's go ahead and get to it. So starting from one point of the block, I'm gonna quilt a diagonal line to the opposite point. I'm gonna reposition my ruler and go back to the other side of the block, quilting straight till I get to that point. I like to call this dot to dot quilting because I'm using dots or reference points on the blocks to create these intricate designs. Now I'm gonna quilt another diagonal line that stops just about an inch or so inside of that first V that I quilted, and then I'm gonna quilt back to the original stopping point. Now I have what's basically an echoed V or a Star Trek sign, depending on you know, where your preferences lay. Now what I love about using rulers is every time I use them, I love to use them for quilting in the ditch or stitching along the side of this block. And what that allows me to do is stitch along that seam so I can get to my next place, which is gonna be on this farther point on the white block. Then using the ruler again, I'm gonna quilt a couple of wedges to fill in that shape, going diagonally, echoing the side, and then back to my starting point. And that sets me up to easily move into the orange triangle, quilting diagonal lines 
until I get to the bottom of the next white block. I love how this is so efficient. I can quickly go from one block to the next. And in this big square, I'm just gonna quilt some more of those wedge shapes. I think I'll do four of them this time to really fill in that area. I'm loving how this dot-to-dot -dot quilting is quickly filling that block, making it look nice and intricate, but it's easy and fast. And best of all, no marking, which is always a really good thing. Hold on a second. Oh, okay, well, hmm. What I have here is an unintentional customization of the quilt pattern. If you wanted to make it just like the pattern says, it could look like this. Isn't that nice? All the corner blocks pointing out like that. But if you wanted to really draw attention to the center of the star or really give it its own different look, you could just rotate those corner blocks and get a totally different effect. I really personally love the juxtaposition of the two types next to each other. Okay, who am I kidding? I messed that up. I accidentally flipped those corner blocks. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Oh well, it's not coming out because if grandpa were here, he'd say, leave it in. A finished quilt is better than a perfect quilt top. Well. Mistakes and all, I'm gonna get this quilt finished, the scrappy binding on, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I'm done. Even though this quilt didn't necessarily go together exactly how I planned, I still love how it turned out. I had so much fun with the color placement and using the geometric dot-to-dot -dot quilting to highlight certain blocks. And what I thought was fun is I highlighted one block in each row. I simply just looked at it and thought, well, which one is the best piece block to show off? And the rest of the quilt, I just did a nice wavy all over design that added such a great texture. And it might be surprising, but I use the same thread color over the whole quilt. A light yellow 50 weight thread that just blends in nicely. Don't forget to comment below and let me know what you do at your family reunions. Believe it or not, I actually read some of those comments and reply from time to time. It's not because I don't have a life, it's just because I like seeing what y'all are up to. Well be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video and I'll see you next time on the Midnight Quilt Show.